On this episode of the Connected Investors podcast and YouTube show, you're going to learn why writing a book could be the smartest thing you've ever done. Have writer's block? Don't worry. We're going to give you a step-by-step -step formula that you can follow to write your book on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast-paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Connected Investors Podcast, Exactly How. During this episode, you'll discover exactly how to publish your very own book. For those of you who are new, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com. Today, we have the privilege to learn from a woman who is a 13 times best-selling author and has published over 2,500 books on Amazon. Wow. Prior to her career in, uh, you know, in book publishing, she was a web designer, retail business owner, and a waitress in college. All of that changed at a marketing event. I would describe our guest as innovative, and today she's going to explain exactly how to publish a book Jen Foster, thank you so very much for being here with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're really excited. This is a very near and dear topic uh, to my heart because when I first started investing in real estate, um, you know, you don't get a degree in real estate investing or anything like that. So I wanted to be an expert. So I wrote a book and that was like me giving myself credibility to go out there and be a real estate investor. And I've wrote a lot of books since. I'm going to give away some of the books that I wrote. You have some great free gifts. So uh, this is a little bit different of a topic than we normally talk about, but it can really impact your real estate investing business or any business uh, when, you're, when you're out there uh, hustling and trying to make some money. So before we dive into exactly how to publish your own book, Jen, you contribute a lot of your success to being open-minded and staying positive. Why do you think that's played such a big role in your success? Yeah, you know, if you if you don't have open-mindedness, if you're not open-minded, then when opportunities come to you, you're going to say no, right? Or you're going to be like not looking for that opportunity. So you have to have open-mindedness so that when that opportunity comes, whether it's the next flip or the next book opportunity, you have to have that open mind and that positive attitude or else you can't keep moving forward, right? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing really more important than a positive attitude. Yeah. You know, it's uh, for anyone who's ever read Think and Grow Rich, which is, which is my favorite book. Have you read that one, Jen? Oh, yeah. Quite a few times. I'm actually rereading it right now. I just started to reread. I read it once a year. And every time I read it, it brings something new, uh, something new to my life. But, you know, having that positive attitude is monumentally important. So it makes sense on why you'd contribute, you know, a lot of your success to, to staying open-minded and positive. And for anyone who's not positive, think of it as just uh, open-mindedness of just curiosity. Being naturally curious is also a, you know, tied into being open-minded as well. So we're going to jump into this here. Uh, but for those of you who are new, what makes the Exactly How Financial Freedom podcast unique is every show comes with a detailed action plan. We're going to pull all the steps out of Jen's head and create a great step-by-step -step guide for you so you can publish your own book as well. In addition, all you have to do is visit exactlyhow.com to get access to this blueprint and all of the free bonuses and the gifts that we're going to give away, all of the takeaways and the resources mentioned on the call. If you're driving around, you don't have to worry about it. You just visit exactlyhow.com and you can get everything we're going to talk about. In addition, you can throw your name into a drawing to win access to the pre-MLS. This is a $3,000 software that locates the most highly motivated sellers in any market and we're going to give it away to someone for free right here if you're watching this live on youtube or facebook you can go to exactlyhow.com right now and throw your name into the drawing so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump right into this and uh, jen I, I kind of touched on this a little bit but before we break down the steps why do you think it's important for people to write a book yeah, well, you hit it right on the head when you said, you know, the reason why you wrote your books was to give you credibility and authority. So that is one of the reasons why people would write a book is to make sure that their expertise is in a book so that when they're talking or speaking in front of a crowd, that they have that credibility and that authority because they're an author, right? A lot of speakers who don't have books sometimes don't get speaking gigs because they don't have a book, right? So they say, what, what was the book that you last published, right? 
So you want to have that book for, to give you the credibility. Now there's other people who might want to write a book for a different reason. It might be to share a specific message to just get that message out there to the masses, right? It might be to, um, it might be because they are really good at writing fiction and they want to write a, they want to publish a fish, fiction book, right? Um, but but I've seen that the way to do a nonfiction or to do a book to help you with your credibility is just to simply put your thoughts down on paper and get out your knowledge so that you can share that with other people. Yeah, absolutely. And um, let's talk about some of the free gifts that we're going to give people in case they don't make it to the end of the show here. So okay. you have a great free gift. Can you kind of explain what you're giving everyone at exactlyhow.com? Yes. Yeah, we're, I'm giving away a free book, of course. It's an ebook, and it is how to write your own story of accomplishment and success. So it's kind of some prompts, some journal prompts, and help you to write that book to get that book started. Thank you so much for providing that value. This is, we're going to give a poll a bunch of you know, high level steps out of Jen's head, but I think this book will really uh, fill in the gaps for anyone who is really, you know, considering this as a, you know, viable way to market yourself and, uh, and grow your business. And uh, I'm going to give away a free book as well. It's the insider's guide to funding uh, real estate investments. I created a actual a cliff notes version of this book that you can go ahead and pick up at exactlyhow.com. This was in Barnes and Noble. This was not a self-published book. Someone actually paid me a lot of money to write this book. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I can give away uh, you know, a handful of these copies. So when you visit exactlyhow.com, you can get this book right here and you can also get Jen's book on how to write books. And that's really exciting because real estate investors, they think they need money. And check this out, Jen, I'm going to throw a little left curveball at you here. Yeah. Look at all this for everyone on YouTube. Awesome. What do you, what do you see right there? <laughs> Love it. You got a big stack of money there. This is, is $80,000. And um, actually, we just shot a commercial for, our, for privatelenders.com. Oh, cool. And we use this as a prop. But let me tell you something, Jen. When I put this in my car... My whole car smelled like cash. Like this, this has <laughs> really got a, you know, quite a pungent smell to it. All and right. uh, we waited. Now you've it's got a, your investment for your next, your next property, right? Exactly. $80,000 wow. in cash right here. Now, Jen, what I didn't realize when I took this money out of the bank, I had to get there. Uh, I had to call three days in advance to put this money back in the bank. They're going to charge me $240. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> I had no didn't idea. see that one coming. So <laughs> no. anyway. That's why I usually use movie money for some of our stuff, but yeah, you might want to just put it under your time, mattress. So. Yeah, exactly. I'm bringing this, <laughs> I'm bringing this right back to the bank right now. So, all right. Awesome. So that, that money could be yours with the, with the right book. So yeah. let's go ahead and break down um, the steps to, uh, to writing a book. And prior to uh, Jen and I going live here, we talked about the, uh, the three steps being writing and editing, publishing and promoting. So, uh, Jen, take us away on step one, writing and editing. All right. Well, the first thing to do when you are thinking about writing a book is set the time, give yourself some accountability and write the book, right? Now, a lot of us are not writers. And so you say, oh, well, how am I going to write a book if I'm not a very good typer or I don't really like writing longhand, right? I don't know how to write cursive or I just don't really know how to get what's up in my head onto paper. And so we have some really cool tools for you. I'm sure you've heard of a lot of um, transcribing software out there, but a couple of my favorites is Otter. It's, it's spelled like O-T-T-E-R. It's spelled like the otter that swims on his back in the river, right? Otter dot A-I, and A-I stands for artificial intelligence. But you can go to that website or you can go download the app and that app will record anything that you say. So you can record meetings, you can record you talking, but I like to record my books. So of course you want to kind of do a mind map and set up your chapters and figure out what you want inside your book. But after you know what you want, because you know all the information's in your head and all the stories are in your head too, right? So then you simply record yourself talking the book. And if you don't know the content to put in, if you speak and if you have a PowerPoint presentation, your book is your talk, your talk is your book. So that's pretty easy. But if you don't speak and you don't know what you know to put in your book, all you have to do is think of your top 10 frequently asked questions that people ask you all the time about your expertise. And then come up with the top 10 should ask questions. It's like that question they should have asked you, um, you know, to help you, them to understand what you really do. And then for each of those questions, you can come up to one of one to three stories for each question. So usually you have an example that answers the question or kind of explains it further or gives you like the moral of why you need to know that, right? So after you've come up with all of those things, then it's pretty easy to talk that content, to record that content. 
and the artificial intelligence will just type it out for you. So it's pretty awesome. You can just copy and paste it into your Word doc or your, or your yeah. Google doc or whatever you're doing. So it's pretty awesome. That's a fantastic framework. You answered like 10 questions I was going to have. Uh, <laughs> well, that's okay. We can deep dive into them. But, yeah. but that's you know, it. That's how you write a book. I mean, it's really not as hard as you think it would be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in the first book I wrote, uh, I tried to, it's called Real Estate Investing in Your 20s. Yeah. Um, I'll give away a copy of that book as well since I'm, since I'm men mentioning it. But uh, I did a lot of case studies in that book yeah. as well. So as someone who's a real estate investor, if you're out there actively doing deals, you can just talk through the deal. Yeah. Right. And have some kind of a case studies there um, as well. Any other, uh, you know, tidbits of information you can give yeah. someone on, you know, what type of book should I write? I think that was. Sure. I yeah. That was I mean, really well, that's, that's a big question. You know, what type of book should I write? A lot, a lot of information books or self-help help books. You really just want to write what you know the most about. Right. Um, a lot of people will say, well, I want to write a children's book, but that, that's great. Write a children's book. Right. Um, but if you, if you're doing a nonfiction book to help your business, or if you're doing a book about real estate, or you're doing a book about your expertise and knowledge, then that's what you need to just get out of your head is what do you know for sure? And what stories can go along with that and, and get that in a book. Now there's of course other ways to write a book besides the 10 by 10 by three that I was talking about the 10 questions, 10 FAQ, 10 SAQ, and the three stories. But you can, and you can find that I have a YouTube video that's nine ways to write a book fast. So there's other ideas, like you said, you did case studies, right? Uh, Tim Ferriss is known for doing case studies. There's a lot of people that will do, um, even Tony Robbins just did that, that money book, he did case studies, right? So there's a lot of different ways and different things you can put in a book. It's just a matter of what, knowing what you want to do in that book. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, uh, is it okay if we embed that YouTube video you're talking about uh, yeah. at exactly how? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nine great. Ways, yeah. Nine ways to write a book fast. I'll send you the link. We'll make sure to have that at, exa at exactly how.com. This way you can kind of, you can review that. Um, talk me through the, before we jump into the next step, uh, timeline, right? The first yeah. book I wrote took me about seven years to yeah. write because, uh, you know, and if you're brand new, maybe, maybe this strategy would work, would work for you. I was just documenting my progress. I was yeah. a young real estate investor. I'd never done a deal before. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to be a millionaire in real estate. People are going to want to know how I did it. So I'm going to write it down. A very powerful exercise, as a matter of fact. It was putting me in the state of being successful as I was writing that book all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you've never done a deal before, that could be a fun uh, you know, option for you. Just what you've learned, your first deal playbook type yeah. thing, and just documents, uh, document what you're doing. But uh, my second book I wrote, this one right here, The Insider's Guide to Funding Real Estate Investments, took me about a month, month and a half. And I did talk out most of this and I had a ghostwriter as well. Because yeah. after, I, after I talked everything out, it was a bunch of you know, pieces of the puzzle. And then I had someone kind of come in and put it all together. Is that something that you, uh, yeah. you, have, you talk about in some of your, your trainings? Oh, definitely, definitely. Because after you have that transcription, if you're not a writer, if you're not very good at editing, you really need a professional to help you. So you know, that's why there are people out there who are really good at details, they're all really good at punctuation and grammar and or ghostwriting right so they can take your transcription they can make it into awesome paragraphs make it look like a book rearrange it so that it makes sense and ask you hey you know we need to fill in a hole here we need to move this over here and work with you to get your book done properly yeah you know when i got this book back i couldn't believe i wrote it <laughs> right <laughs> right it was like i wrote that it was formatted so well and just yeah. laid out properly and it just made sense. Um, so there's a lot of value there. So books can be done very quickly if you have the right, uh, if you have some stories in your head, you write them down and you have someone do that. Um, how much money would you say for someone who's not the expert, because very few of you probably are, mm -hmm. would someone want to set aside to just get their book written and formatted correctly if they were to go the route of hiring a ghostwriter what's something like that yeah. you typically cost you know most ghostwriters will charge anywhere from six cents to ten cents a word so you got to have a little bit of an investment so you got to think about how many words you you know you're writing a, a good book is at least 135 pages a, a six by nine so you got to think about that so i mean you can google and decide yep. you know how many words is it and all those kind of things but you just want to make sure that do the math do the, do the math for me jen like six <laughs> yeah. six cents a word yeah, 6,500 6, bucks. Or yeah, no, 6,500 words. Oh, okay. So, 
Yeah, but but I would say, you know, each ghostwriter is different. Some are going to work by project. Some are going to work by word. So, I mean, you want if you want a really good ghostwriter, you're going to pay anywhere between, you know, two grand and 10 grand, you know, it just kind of depends on who you're hiring, right? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good range. So your first book could be a short one. Yeah, it could be a short one. And, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, great. So I just wanted to kind of establish some sort of a budget here. Sure. If you're not going to be writing it, you probably want to have about $5,000 uh, set yeah. aside for getting it looking like something you're going to be really proud of to yes. put your uh, to, to put your name on. Anything else you want to uh, touch on, on writing and editing on before writing? we move into publishing? I think just the main thing is the editing. Just make sure you do hire a professional. So if you're not getting a ghostwriter, definitely hire an editor to edit your book before you publish. You can go through it a million times and even, you know, even, <laughs> even uh, the one by the, the Keller Williams book, the one that has a mistake on the first page. So even if you have a professional published book, you're going to have mistakes. But if you have a lot of eyes on it, there's going to be less mistakes, right? <laughs> so <laughs> you want to make sure you have that editor. Yeah, Absolutely. So we talked about writing and editing, gave you a great framework on how you can start writing your book and uh, set some expectations. Uh, let's talk about publishing the book because I've published yeah. books two different ways and uh, maybe there are more ways than that, but walk me through the publishing process. Yeah. Well, of course, there's the traditional publishing route and that is you know, definitely a good one. You just got to make sure you read your contracts good, make sure you have a really good book agent, make sure you um, know what you want, right? Um, and book agents can help you with all that. Um, and then there's a self-publishing route or a hybrid publishing route. So self-publishing, of course, would be you putting it up on Amazon yourself and being, you want to be, make sure that you are a good tech person, that you know a lot about Microsoft Word and Adobe Photoshop and Adobe, <laughs> and Adobe uh, PDF reader, yeah. you know, DC reader. So the Adobe suite pretty much mm -hmm. if in design, all those kind of things. If you know those kind of things and you want to do it yourself, go for it, right? Just research and learn how to do it right. Um, if you are the done for you type of person, then you want to get a hybrid publisher or a boutique publisher that will help you self publish a book so you can keep your own rights and royalties. And it can be under your name. It can be under your business for your copyright. It can be or whatever you want to, you know, use your personal name. If you don't have an LLC, you can do sole proprietor or whatever and have your book published under your name. But it's awesome because self publishing is great because you can keep your own rights and royalties. You can change your price anytime you can, you get to decide what's, you know, your title and all that kind of stuff. And, and working with someone who is an expert at that, um, with their, which I've noticed there's quite a few um, boutique publishers and hybrid publishers out there. Um, so it is really good to have some help in, in doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was uh, really tough just to get my book on Amazon, the formatting. Yeah, yeah, was, the formatting uh, alone is, is one thing and the book cover. So the, you know, the, the title and the book cover are probably the two most important things in your book. And people say, don't judge a book by its cover, but we all do. So <laughs> you want to make sure you have an amazing book cover and to have an amazing book cover, you have to have a really good graphic designer, right? So if you're not a good graphic designer, then you need to hire one. Um, and for the book title, you want to make sure that it's a good keyword loaded title, right? You don't want a title that's called, you know, my story because, that's not a very good keyword, right? There's hundred books called My Story, I'm sure. Probably more than a hundred. So you wanna make sure you have that good title, good cover. And, and, then, and then just make sure you have the, the best book you can have, right? Yeah, well it's, uh, you know, to get someone to publish you in today's world, I think is uh, very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, this, uh, the, you know, the, actually it's funny, the, the reason that my book got published is because I had a book agent that was sending this this book to uh, to individuals, and it wasn't it wasn't done yet. They took it and made it made it pretty, but yeah. the uh, the individual who was deciding who gets published and who didn't get published saw actually one of the people that did a forward on the back yeah. and was in a fraternity with the individual there you and go. called them up, and it was it was crazy. So I made it from the wow. bottom to the top because Doug Lebda, the CEO of Lending Tree gave oh, cool. a forward to, uh, to my book. And those are, mm -hmm. you know, those are really important. I got a CEO of Lending Tree and then Than Merrill from Fortune Builders, yeah. which everyone kind of knows, uh, yeah. to, you know, endorse my book. So book endorsements yeah. are, are also good for That's marketing huge. when you are, when we get to the next step of, um, yes. you know, of promoting. So. Yes. Yeah. So endorsements great. are huge. You want to have, you want to have some key people to help you to introduce your book and to give you the endorsements, whether it's just on the back or writing the forward. 
Yeah. And then to self publish, I remember it cost me about 750 bucks just yes. to, just to get mm-hmm. it self published. Is that a good, is that still about the price? Uh, it kind of depends on who you're working with. <clears throat> I mean, if you're hiring like freelancers to format and do all those kind of things, you can piecemeal it all. Right. But if you're, if you're hiring a, a professional, you know, p- boutique publisher or mm-hmm. hybrid publisher, it might cost more than that. It kind of just depends on the packages with, with the authors we work with. We, we put in marketing with it, right? So we're not just going to put your book up on Amazon and say, see you later, yeah, because that, that would be mean. Like you got to know how to sell your book and how to pl- what to do after your book's published. So that's what we, we include marketing in all of our packages, but it just kind of depends on who you're, who you're working with. Yeah, and uh, also the physical versions of the book. It's one thing to write a book that's digital. But there's something yeah. about holding it when you can, yeah. you know, you can yeah, touch let's it, talk which, about that for a minute. So which what's is why, formats? Yeah. yeah, just like money, right? Yeah. The formats of a book. A lot of people will write an ebook and they'll say, oh, you know, my ebook's not selling very well. Well, not everyone likes e-readers, right? Some people love to hold the physical book. So you got to have your book in all formats. So we suggest ebook and paperback for sure, no matter what. And, and that being said, <clears throat> you don't want your ebook and paperback only on Amazon. You want it everywhere books are sold. So you want your ebook to be everywhere, like Google Books, Apple Books, everywhere that books are sold, right? Mm-hmm. And then the paperback too. You don't want your paperback just on Amazon. You want it on Barnes and Noble. You want it on Books a Million. You want it on Kobo, Walmart. Like everywhere books are sold online, you want your paperback book available. Yeah. Because not everyone buys on Amazon. People buy on all other places, right? So that's really important. Make sure that whoever you're working with distributes your book on all channels online and offline too bookstores right like you said inside barnes and noble you know depending on who you're publishing with they might not distribute distribute through actual bookstores so you got to make sure that you have the offline and online yeah that was always a dream of mine to be in the bookstore you know right. to be able to go into a barnes and noble because i got I, you know for those of you who who don't know me i started in real estate with no money no connections i was browsing the bookshelves of barnes and noble because the internet really wasn't what it was today there were no podcasts for sure mm-hmm. And uh, that's how I found real estate. And now to have my book at Barnes and Noble is, is pretty cool. So I'm hoping that I'm helping some other people that I, that yeah. I never meet. So that kind of goes into promoting. We talked about how to write it, the different publishing models. I've kind of given you an idea of cost. Now promoting a book. Um, great. You got your book. It's all ready to go. How do we get people to actually buy it? And I'm going to be taking notes yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. So there's lots of different ways, of course. Um, when we work with authors, we always do a bestseller campaign. And with that, we do that on Amazon. Now, of course, you've heard of a New York Times bestseller. You've heard of a Wall Street Journal bestseller. And they all have different criteria, right? So New York Times, you have to sell like 250,000 books in two weeks. And those are paperback or hardback books, by the way. And you have to have a traditional publisher to get that. Uh, Wall Street Journal is another one you can get. And it has different criteria. And then Amazon bestseller. So Amazon, when what we do when we do a bestseller campaign is we use an ebook model. So we're getting as many sales as we can on the ebook. Now the ebook, um, how Amazon tracks it online is Amazon wants to say who's selling the most books right now. Um, and that probably changes about every hour. So we do a 24 hour campaign and we launch the book and we get as many people as we can to buy that book. Uh, and we usually reduce the price to about a dollar and then we can put it back up to the five or $7 or whatever price they want to list it, which is awesome with self publishing. You get to choose how, what price you want to sell your ebook yeah. at. Which is really good too, because if you're speaking at a, in a big group and your book's normally $7.99, maybe you want to reduce that down to 99 cents for the day so that you can, you know, tell your audience to buy the book for a dollar. And maybe you give them a, a physical book for that exchange of them spending the dollar, um, which boosts you back up on Amazon. And then everyone is excited because they got a physical book for a dollar. Oh, and an ebook too, right? <laughs> so pretty cool. But yeah, so that's what we do. We do bestseller launches and, and we just love uh, getting people number one on Amazon. Uh, I used to be doing, uh, getting people number one with their websites on Google. And now I just get people number one on Amazon. So it's, pretty it's, cool. I mean, it's just, a, it's just a different marketplace of, yeah. of people searching there. Yeah. You different know, also, algorithms, uh, different search engine, right? Amazon's just a search engine. Yeah. I've also seen people to kind of uh, boost their, their ranking. They basically pre-sell tons of books. Yeah. Right? That's ahead, another ahead model. Mm-hmm. Another model is a pre-sell and that works really well too. If you're writing a book, like you said, you were, wrote your book in about a month and a half. Mm-hmm. So Amazon has a pre-sell feature, just like, you know, Disney release pre-releases their, their movies. Mm-hmm. You can have a pre-order and you have up to 90 days to submit your final book. 
So if you can get it done in a month and a half, or you just want to make sure you get that book submitted before the 90 days is up. <laughs> you know what though? That's uh, Jen, that's a really good thing. Like after you've started your book, you have some momentum, just throw yeah. it up on Amazon and start to pre-sell it because now you actually oh, yeah. have a deadline, right? Yeah. Like it totally you holds you accountable. Yeah, yeah. It holds you accountable. And that's really yeah. what success is all about is right. having those accountability factors all around you. Yeah. Uh, and what's cool about a pre-order is you only need a title a description and a book cover to get your pre-order up. Of there course, you've got to have some kind of content like an outline or something for the document, but you, you don't have to have your whole book written. So then you can take that, you know, 60 days and get your book written and get everything uploaded and, and submit it to Amazon. So pre-orders are really fun. We do those quite a bit. Oh, great, great. Yeah, I'm sure your company has a lot of, uh, a lot of different ways that you work with people. Uh, if you don't mind mm -hmm. letting people know, like how do, you typically, uh, how do you typically work with people and what exactly do you do? Yeah, so usually the author will come to us with their manuscript already written. Every once in a while, they, they don't know what to write. So we do a VIP day and, and do the book writing you know, strategy and figure out all that. So you can work with people them. who don't even, don't even have a book yet. Yeah, so either, either way. But then, of course, after that, then we take them through the whole process. We are the done-for-you service, so we help them with the book cover, the title, the description, help you write your bio, all that kind of stuff. Um, make sure you have good headshots, you know, all those kind of things. Um, and then get your book up and bestseller. And then of course the marketing side to it, we, after you're a bestseller, then we help with, you know, during the social, during the uh, bestseller, we also want to help with your branding and social media. Cause if you're an author, you got to have an online presence. So we help with some Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and stuff like that, depending on where your market is branding yourself. And then further on that is learning how to use your book to sell more. So Perfect. using to sell whatever service you're doing, whether it's real estate investing, um, a digital training course, speaking, whatever your call to action is, we want to make sure that's in your book. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone on the line here, you know, think what type of book would you want to write? Comments like, you know, just let us know, Hey, I want to write a book about this. It'd be really cool to see what, uh, what you think might work and we'll, we'll interact with you. So make sure to jump over to YouTube to comment there or on Facebook and actually, Jen, I realized I forgot to announce the winner of all of the free stuff uh, oh, of, of our $3,000 software. So yeah. this individual, they went to exactlyhow.com to pick up some great free stuff and review some notes. They threw their name into the hat and now they're winning a software that is valued at $3,000 that basically just puts them on the one yard line of finding a deal. It's like, hey, awesome. here they are, go get it. And the winner of today's software is... Before we move on, here's a word from our sponsor. Looking for a private money partner to fund your flips or rentals? Go direct to the source. PrivateLenders.com, a free marketplace that instantly matches you with up to five private money lenders to save thousands by having non-bank lenders compete to be your funding partner. PrivateLenders.com. Dave Gallagher. Dave, congratulations. Okay. We're going to get you all set up. A $3,000 value. Now, this is $10,000 I'm holding in the screen here, but it's a $3,000 value. We'll be reaching out to you, Dave, to get you all set up. And um, Jen, one more thing I heard about uh, uh, promoting a book, unfortunately, after mine was in Barnes & Noble, um, mm -hmm. was a super ninja trick here. I don't know if maybe, maybe you've never even heard this before, but they, uh, they said once their book was in a bookstore, bookstores have to sell a certain amount in a certain period of time to keep reordering. Mm -hmm. So what this individual did is he would go to the bookstores and hire people in all these markets and turn the book. Cause think about your book. If it's this way, right? Mm -hmm. No one can see it. All the, all you have is this little funding. So he'd go right. there and he'd just turn the book and now mm -hmm. people walk by and they see your book and you don't get your book turned until you've sold a certain amount X, Y, Z times. So right. it was a little, Hack he did, and that's how he became a uh, New York Times bestseller. But he had to uh, essentially uh, hire tons of people, thousands of people yeah. around the United States to turn to turn the book. But turn the book. anyway, that's turn awesome. The book. Yeah, that's awesome. We've had a few cool. clients that'll go into Barnes and Noble and buy their book. Oh, of course. So yeah, that's exactly. Always, that's, all, that's always exactly. good. Send, send people in there, get that book sold. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Jen, what do you think your life would be like if you? if you never got into, into book publishing? You know, I, I've thought about that before and my life has totally changed because of book publishing. You know, once I wrote my first book and being that expertise, I mean, it was more just about marketing, which 
it does play kind of the same kind of marketing today. I mean, it's digital marketing, right? So it evolves all the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my first book was a, with was with Dan Kennedy. It was a chapter book. And Dan Kennedy, oh, you know, he's a huge marketing guru exactly, guy. He yeah. writes these copy, copy letters. And uh, just that credibility of me with Dan Kennedy and then all the phone calls I got after I wrote that book from people I didn't even know. You know, people from other cities are calling me, you know. And, and that kind of just changed how my business worked. So I think if I, if I wouldn't have done that, if I wouldn't have written a book, I think I would still just be, you know, the 10 or 15 clients that I had, you know, back in the day, just on my own, you know, yeah. we're now, you know, it's evolved into a really big corporation and I've helped, helped almost a hundred people write their books in the last three and a half years. And then we have like 2,500 books now on Amazon. So it's that awesome. Is, you've basically taken over Amazon. I'm going to want to talk to you about that a little <laughs> bit. All right. All right, Jen, are you ready for the rapid fire section of this? Yeah. Um, of this podcast here. That's All it. right. On a scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? Oh, probably eight. All right. Wow. Get up early or stay up late? Get up early. How many hours of sleep do you get on average? About six and a half. This is gonna be a tough one for you. Your favorite or most recent book that you read? Oh, I'm going to have to go with the book we're launching tomorrow, which is <laughs> I Am Recovered by Todd Sylvester. That's the last one I read. Awesome. All right. Um, if you could be any superhero, who would it be? Uh, probably Wonder Woman. Perfect. Um, what do you think? <clears throat> what's something everyone should do less of? Uh, say no. What is something everyone should do more of? Say yes. <laughs> Will people visit Mars in your lifetime? Yes. All right. Awesome. Thanks again for jumping on the Exactly How podcast and YouTube show. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, to chatting with you about some of your services for sure. Awesome. Thank All you. right. For everyone who is still here with us, congratulations. You made it to the end of the show. Most people don't finish what they start but you found a lot of value in what Jen and I were bringing you. You made it to the end. Just give us a thumbs up, like, share, tag someone, at least leave a little comment. Your interactions, your engagement is really what fuels us to spend a lot of time to kind of bring you this information. So please go ahead and let us know that you're there, that you're alive. And uh, make sure to visit exactlyhow.com because you can see the full archive of all the shows. And yes, all of the free gifts are on all of the show archives. So we've done you know, dozens and dozens of these. You can just go scoop up all this great free stuff and really, um, and really get a lot of value from that. So we have a lot of, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review if you like it, and I'll talk to you on the next Exactly How. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the property marketplace, you'll be able to find, favorite, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.